When Democrats on the Environment and Public Works Committee asked Scott Pruitt for critical information on his environmental record as Attorney General of Oklahoma, Scott Pruitt said no to the Environment and Public Works Committee. When Democrats on the Environment and Public Works Committee asked our fellow Republicans to delay Mr. Pruitt's vote until he got that important information, the Republican leadership here said, no, we won't wait for that critical information so that all senators and the American people can understand who is being nominated. When I asked Scott Pruitt if he would recuse himself from all issues related to the cases that he has brought against the EPA as Oklahoma Attorney General, Scott Pruitt said no to me. Well, today, we are here to respond to these very serious issues that are being raised about his ability to be an impartial administrator of the EPA. Because the question before the American people and the Senate is whether or not Scott Pruitt should be the administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency. And that answer is no. The EPA is our cop on the beat, protecting the American people and our environment from harmful pollution, hazardous waste, and the impacts of climate change. But as Attorney General of Oklahoma, Scott Pruitt has tried to undermine the Clean Water Rule and Clean Air Act, putting the public health of millions of Americans at risk. Scott Pruitt questions the science of climate change. Scott Pruitt has accused the EPA of overestimating air pollution from drilling of natural gas wells in Oklahoma. Scott Pruitt has argued against President Obama's clean power plan, which the EPA is supposed to implement. Scott Pruitt, Pruitt has sued to block the EPA from restricting mercury, a toxin that causes brain damage in children in the United States. The only thing that Scott Pruitt is certain of is that he wants to represent the interests of the fossil fuel industry. He wants to change the environmental watchdog into a polluter lapdog. And today, we are drawing the line out here on the Senate floor because it's critical that the American people understand the moral implications for the water Americans drink, for the air which they breathe, for the mercury that could go into the blood systems of children in our country, for the amount of smog that is allowed to be sent into the air, the amount of haze which is created across our country, and why the nomination of Scott Pruitt leads inevitably, inexorably towards more pollution, more unhealthy air, more unhealthy water going into the systems of our, uh, our families across our country. And that really goes to what the moral duty is of the United States Senate. The moral duty is that we have two ordinary families across the country. Do Americans really think that the air that we're breathing is too clean? Do people really believe that the water which we drink is too clean? Do people really want to water down those standards? Do they want to reduce the safeguards that we have put in place? A hundred years ago, life expectancy in the United States was about 48 years of age. In other words, we had gone from the Garden of Eden all the way to about 100 years ago, and we had increased life expectancy to about 48 years of age. Not much progress. 
Now, it was always good for the Methuselah family. The wealthy always did pretty well. They could protect themselves from the things that would affect ordinary families, poorer families, from the Bible to 100 years ago. But then what happened? Well, all of a sudden, there was an awakening in our country that we had to make sure that the sewerage systems in our country were not going to be able to pollute families across our society. And then step by step, beginning with sewerage and water, we came in our nation to understand that we had to re remove the majority of pollutants that were out there that were damaging the lives of ordinary Americans. That was a change that transformed not just the United States, but over time, the whole rest of the world. So now, 100 years later, life expectancy now goes out to age 80. In other words, we've added 32 years of bonus life to the average American over the last 100 years. And what did it? Well, it's no secret formula. It's just that we looked around and we saw the things that we had to put in place in order to protect families. And we took a moral responsibility to make sure that those industries, especially who were not providing protections, were forced to provide protect protections for those ordinary families. So here we are now considering Scott Pruitt as the new administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency. Here's what Mr. Pruitt has done as the Attorney General of Oklahoma. He has sued the National Environmental Protection Agency for the state of Oklahoma 19 times. And the issues on which he has sued are almost a litany of the things that go right to the heart of the protections which the American people want for their families. Now, there are still eight cases that he brought pending before the EPA. And I said to Scott Pruitt in the confirmation hearing, I said, Attorney General Pruitt, will you recuse yourself from consideration of any of those eight pending cases during the time that you are the administrator of the EPA if you are confirmed? And Mr. Pruitt said no. Well, as I said to him in the hearing, if you do not recuse yourself, Mr. Pruitt, that turns you into the plaintiff, the defendant, the judge, and the jury for all of those cases. And that is just an unconscionable conflict of interest. And as a result, he would never be seen as an impartial administrator at the EPA uh, as he moved forward trying to repeal or weaken environmental protections through regulations that he originally sought to accomplish through litigation. And we all know that across our country, overwhelmingly, that the American people want in the highest possible polling numbers, Democrat and Republican, liberal and conservative, they want the EPA to protect clean air, clean water, public health. They don't want children unnecessarily being exposed to pollutants in the atmosphere that can cause asthma. Those numbers are going up. The goal in America is to see the numbers go down. But that will not be the agenda that Scott Pruitt brings to the EPA if he is, in fact, confirmed. This question of his fitness for this job also goes to the question of climate change. The science of climate change is now well established. It is something that Pope Francis came 
to the Capitol a year and a half ago to deliver his sermon on the hill to us. And what Pope Francis said to us is very simple. Number one, that the planet is dangerously warming and that it is something that is being caused by human activity largely and that those who are going to be most adversely affected are the poorest and most vulnerable in our society and that the, as the Pope said we have a moral responsibility to do something about it as the most powerful country in the world and along with China the leading polluter in the world. This is Pope Francis talking to us about climate change. What does Scott Pruitt say about climate science? He says that he is not quite certain that any actions really have to be taken in order to deal with that issue. Well, we have a pope who actually taught high school chemistry and who delivered a science and morality lesson to the United States Congress. He told us the science is certain, and he told us that our moral obligation is unavoidable. If we had a nominee for the Environmental Protection Agency that embraced that science and morality, I would be voting for him. But that's not who Scott Pruitt is. He's ignoring the impact which the fossil fuel industry is having, and he is unwilling to commit to taking steps that can reduce that danger for our planet, for the most vulnerable on the planet. And so I stand in opposition to his uh, nomination, uh, as I will be standing out here all day and into the night. Uh, I don't think that we're going to have a more important discussion uh, than the direction of the health of our planet, the health of the children, uh, in our country, uh, and, uh, and I think it's something that the American people have to hear all day uh, and through the night.